Get your hands up, plan your own hands can land your own brand and damn I feel like no one takes accountability They want the credibility Convincingly unwilling to put in the fucking hours It takes to get some power Don't be fucking sour Take a cold shower Ladies and gentlemen In this video I'm seeing a lot of comments on Reddit about the Gen 9, Gen 10s. Um, so I have taken this thing with me to every single game since they came out and I built it um, just as a spare or a lend out. And about a month ago, it decided to shit itself. So today I thought we could give this guy a rebuild um, and go over any tips or tricks uh, that I've sort of found with nylon gearboxes and gear sets. So I know that I am a little bit of a snob. I do sort of exclusively work with CNC boxes, but this is how you learn to do that without destroying thousands and thousands of dollars worth of very expensive parts. Um, and on top of that, an entire built drop-in replacement box for these things costs $50. So let's get into it. All right, so off the bat, we have got ourselves a top of plate, a piston, a new set of gears, and a metal trigger, because I don't know why I didn't do that. Um, let's still get the plastic trigger on it. So this is going to be a hell of a lot easier if we pull them apart first. So I can actually maneuver and show you guys what we're doing properly. You have to bear with me. It's been a little while since I've done one of these. All right, you beautiful, sexy ACR. We've lost our power. I'm going to have to fix that. So, one of the first things I want to show you guys is adding a log for motor height adjustment. You can't do that stock on the ACR. Um, It is absolutely mind-boggling to me that they give you one on the Gen 9 and they don't give you one on the ACR, uh, which is probably the biggest adjustment you can make without even doing any other mods, just properly adjusting the uh, motor uh, bevel pinion mesh is going to make this thing last a hell of a lot longer. So we are going to fully, fully disassemble this little guy. That's the one. The one thing I did do to this is I think I put a metal accessory kit on it. I don't remember if they... I'm pretty sure they come metal on the stock one. I don't know. I have not worked with um, nylons for a little while. Yeah, there's my speed motor. I don't know why it's got sticky tape on it. So we're gonna have to unsolder that. So we're gonna have to, give me a sec.
One eternity later. Good old speed mode. It doesn't look like our bevel is stripped. So I think this is actually a, yep, this is a custom motor, I think. Doesn't look like he's stripped, so we're going to find out what is stripped in there. Assembling, and then we'll go over all the uh, little mods. One more. Gotcha. So I don't actually remember if we have to, I think we have to take our butt off. That's right. Okay. I believe we have to, um, okay, there we go. So we don't have to fully take our butt off to do that. Don't hate on me, it's been a while. All right. That is our Gen 9 on bushings. Okay, bearings, yep, bearings for bevel and bushings for the rest. We can deal with that. <laughs> oh, that's not gonna work. I believe that will be a cut down M120. Tappet spring still seems sweet. I reckon we've got a shredded bevel or something shredded here. We're about to find out. Oh, wrong size. I'll do that a little bit. Also the wrong size. I think I may have stripped this screw a little bit. He definitely does not want to come out. This guy does, he's cool.
Okay, this guy is very much stripped. Okay, we're back. We got a spare screw. Well, it looks like a J9 type screw. So let's see if we can. Got him. So, uh, that was a little bit of a blunt force trauma operation. Basically just screwed the head out till a bigger head fit in it, and we could grab enough tension on it to pull it out, so we fucked that off. Now, drum roll. What does it look like inside? I am forgetting something though. I remember forgetting that a lot. And then you go to try and pull the box open and uh, you can't figure out why it won't open. Also, I think we'll take him out as well. Seeing as we're gonna pull the gears out anyway. Just so he doesn't go flying off later. Alright, let's open this sucker up. Oh. Come on. What am I forgetting? There's no more screws. We should be fine. All right, what have we got? What's stripped? I'm keen to see. Okay, let's take that magnet off. I can't immediately see any damage, just straight looking at it. So I think it's gonna be under here or up in here. Here. That looks fine. Okay. Tap it is fine. Okay. Piston is, piston head is fine. Okay. Nozzle is fine. Okay. Get out of here. Go to your tap it. Pull this trap. Get out of here. Okay, I reckon.
Why is it stripped? I see no stripping. to be stripped somewhere. I think we didn't even have a strip. I think we've had a pinion slip. I think this little guy has moved down. God damn it. Okay, so... I think what we're going to do is clean this box off, fix that up, and put a new set of gears in it, just in case, and we'll put a new pinion on the motor. And then we'll test it and see how it's going. Yes, sir. -y. There does not appear to be any strippage on uh, these little guys at all. So we've got a nice clean box, a nice fresh set of gears, and a pinion gear. Let's... Oh, I'm gonna keep... We're keeping the original piston because he still looks good. I, there's... All of it, they all still look good, but I like the piston so we're keeping him. So... Let's go over tips, tricks, and general Gen 9, Gen 10 tomfoolery. Uh, off the bat with the Gen 10, this is not a problem with the Gen 9, so you're going to have to find an appropriate size lug and uh, dremel a hole and melt it in and give it threading if you want to have adjustable motor height. That's a necessity in my opinion gearbox wise it's been a little while but this is one of the biggest weak points you know is it gonna focus yeah yeah any reverse latch post is one of the biggest weak points in a gen 9 gen 10 gearbox they always go so i like to give them a coating of epoxy um like a add a little um, angle of epoxy up to the yeah, edge just to make it a little bit tougher. Number two, you might see that does definitely look a little bit dodgy because it is. These guys always wind up, no matter how you try and attach it to that surface in there, they always wind up bunk, and going into your bevel gear and getting shredded. Um, so you are better off melting a little hole and pushing them through like you would like you get on a normal retro gearbox. Uh, what else? What other tips and tricks can we think of? Okay, so the lugs for your handles, for your grip, you need to epoxy them in as well. Uh, what you'll find is, only if you uh, plan on taking the gun apart ever, so I would definitely recommend doing it, that's up to you. Um, what you'll find is over time, the grip screws will uh, oxidize themselves and fuse themselves into these little nuts here, um, which is cool. It just takes a little bit more force to undo them. Unfortunately, uh, you've got a nylon shell that flexes slightly, um, so these lugs will just spin in there and you'll be forever stuck and have to rip the gearbox out and get an entire new one. What else? What else can we think of? Shimming wise, the... Whoa. 
ACR specific, you do need to have the box in here to be able to um, get your bevel pinion height properly, which is really, really there, which is a little bit annoying, but that's just the way it is if you want the uh, this sort of receiver. Okay. I think it is time to fix this little guy up and rebuild. I'm gonna check bevel height. We'll check our shim just to make sure that's good. And then reassemble and test. Ugly dogly. Rip that off. I'm gonna just cover you with some heat shrink. No, I'm gonna need this little guy. Oh, some of that just hit, hit my heat shrink. It's very thick. I do not think my heat shrink is going to go over that. Nope. Okay. Good enough for testing purposes. Test our shim. bit more difficult to see. I don't know if you guys can see it all. I have no view. A little bit more difficult with these guys to um, figure out your height. But you do, I can clearly see it from my angle here. It's just a little bit difficult to get him on camera for you guys to see. It is visible. I think. I'm going to drop that slightly.
I think that's where we want him. So I'm happy with that. we can test if I'm happy with the shim I don't know if you guys can hear that. I have to put it up. You are not going to hear that sound without dry gears. Um, with nylon or plastic gears. No way, Jose. They are way too light. They absolutely must be dry for you to be able to mesh them properly. So I am actually happy with that. Uh, what I want to do now is test that shim with all the gears in and without that in, like we normally do. So this has just turned into another shimming video, basically, but for a weird receiver that requires special modification. Just did a shimming video. So I'm totally happy with that. I was uh, half expecting we would have to mess around with that a little bit. Time to test our shim. We definitely need a trigger and trigger switch. Look, uh, it's been a while. Put 
a metal trigger in. I do remember the uh, trigger on these guys being an ow, an absolute bitch to get into these. So we shall see if that's still the case. I don't recall. Okay. That wasn't a... Alright. That works. Yeah, we're not going to put him in. We're just going to test our mesh. Test the mesh. have to take into account is that with a nylon gearbox every time you tighten these screws if you over tighten them you are damaging the threading in the gearbox and the tolerances are actually changing as well that Mr. Soldering Iron, that'd be really cool. Time to test the mesh. That sounds fucking beautiful. So that is what a good mesh should sound like, even on Metal Gears. Um, that, that's, if you watch my other shimming videos, that's the noise that you should get, bar, uh, motor one. It should sound like an RC car. I knew that was going to be, um, it doesn't matter how comfortable you are you feel with your work, you always double check, double, triple check. Um, so I'm totally happy with that. Um, normally from there, there is a little trick. It's not really a trick per se. Um, you can make your shimming quieter. That noise is the uh, noise that you get from basically the perfect amount of contact uh, between the cogs on each gear or there's four basically in the in the cycle and you're getting the max contact you can between all of those it's actually like you hear that click that's not actually a click that's three clicks together as four gears click 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 one two three four whatever numbers it's multiple clicks in one that you're actually hearing and you you get used to hearing it on Metal Gears. But if you can get good enough at doing it on nylon, 
um, that you can do a build like we're about to do, you will have zero drama doing a uh, perfectly specced CNC build, uh, like a retro arms. These are a lot harder to get anywhere near close to a decent mesh or shim on, purely because the tolerances are so fucked. But in a, in a, in a, in a line of a hundred of these gearboxes, not a single one of them will have the same exact same tolerances. Uh, that's that's just the uh, nature of the beast with these things. But you still can get a really, really nice mesh out of them if you take the time to sit there and shim them properly. And with the ACR, you absolutely need to be able to adjust your... Um... I think there's a metal bottom you can get for these guys that has an adjustable lug. I didn't have one of those when they first came out, so I had to resort to fire lasers and fire are two of my favorite things I uh, very much can't wait to uh, see if this eats itself again or what it actually sounds like when it runs. Okay, we got a motor. We can chill here. grease the gears as well. Normally helps once I'm happy with my mesh. Alright, what are we doing? Got a piston. Some sort of cylinder type device. Tap a plate. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Okay. I think I do want to check the air seal on that before we put him back together. so tight. Thank you. Okay, you can chill. Get these shims. You can go back in your box. I do want to check. So I believe on that old set of gears, I did take one off. I did short stroke him in two. Well, maybe not. I thought I did. I normally do it anyway. Okay, that's seems. We'll Teflon tape that head. You've actually got enough flex in the gearbox, in a nylon box, that that can move out slightly. These are the tolerances we're dealing with here, guys. But I want to check to make sure... Excuse me. There you go. I'm going to check to make sure that it's not going to bind up, that the piston isn't going to bind up on the back of the boxer. And also with our piston head. Cool. 
That's the tight one. Like it does clear, but it could bind. It could bind. Fuck! Okay. We're short stroking this bitch. One tooth. One tooth. But just as a um, just as a m absolute, make sure it cannot bind on that back end. I'll be back. One eternity later, and we're back. Oh my god, I forgot how <laughs> easy it is working with um, plastic nylon. Well, these are nylon gears, but plastic nylon, same, same. Is that focusing for you guys? Oh. So that may have been the problem with the original gear then. Because he's not short stroked. And there's no visible damage on any of these other gears that I can see. Which is kind of the problem with um, nylon gears sometimes. So it may have been binding up. But if I recall correctly, it was screeching like a motherfucker when I last used it, locked up. So it very well may have been. I thought the bevel and pinion, something on there had gone. She was screeching. Hmm? Ran the other way. I reckon it's ready to reassemble. The short stroke sector gear. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna Teflon tape this little guy. Ooh. I'm gonna lube this little dude as well. So the thing you want to be careful of with your um, Teflon tape is inside of, inside of this tube, anywhere the piston is moving, is a very, 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 very high movement area. So do not have any Teflon tape dingly danglies anywhere inside the tube. You can use it to space it out a little bit, but if you've got uh, dregs, it's going to wind up going through the rest of the gearbox. Which isn't necessarily an issue in and, of, in and of itself, it's Teflon tape, but I like a clean box. Looks super duper neat. Yeah, baby. Alright. And that'll be nice and tight now. Bit of lube. Oh yeah. What now, brown cow? Let's lube the gears. That's important. Oil, grease the gears. So dielectric grease, which is what I use on metal gears anyway. 
Okay, so the trade-off with using dielectric on Metal Gears or on these um, is that it is going to dry out after 6 to 12 months. Especially with a lighter application like I always do. Um, so you do want to make sure that you pull your gun apart at least every 6 months. You can get away with sort of doing it like every year. But you're going to have a really, really dry box when you pull it apart. But that also means that um, things like your tappet spring are likely to go quicker because they'll oxidize. You're cool. Um, but the benefit, the main benefit there of using dielectric grease for um, the main moving bits is uh, you're not having to use molly grease uh, which is going to work its way into your piston and erode your o-rings over time so dielectric you do have to do it more frequently but it means that the parts are all gonna last a fuck ton longer um, molly grease eats plastics, eats rubbers, um, which is just an unavoidable thing, so I kind of just avoid it completely. Oh, you got your shims on you, I don't want to lose them. So you can see how light a covering I'm giving. It's really hard to see, actually. I'm giving him a super duper light covering. Uh, yeah, you do have to take into account that the second you pull that trigger, these things spin very, very quickly, and any extra grease or oil or whatever that's sitting on them is going to get flicked around the box. Beep. Definitely going to need my magnet for this one. Whoa, buddy. Chill. So I'm not even going to replace the tappet. I'm actually happy with that. You know what? I think we should let him re release a little bit quicker. It is going to be a very quick build. That is a quick motor, or it was a quick build. Can you get in your hole? I don't know why I'm finding that so difficult. The other thing I remember having a lot of trouble with with these was um, this guy angling when you try and tighten it all back up. So I'm going to be extra careful with that one. I've gone over pretty much any tips and tricks that I can think of with these boxes. If I missed anything, blast me in the comments obviously, but I'm pretty sure that's what you need to really be worrying about. That should be sweet. Alright. I 
Oh, no way. No way that's just gonna sit there. That's, that's scaring me. That's, it shouldn't be that. It shouldn't do that. That's scary. Magnum? Safety. Got everything. Look, I'm just double, triple checking. Okay, let's try this. Sure how piston moves. Yeah, I think that's incorrectly. Okay. Oh. How is that too small? Wrong screw. Lying around. I am one hundred percent gonna flick this little dude off. Okay, so I think that is ready to test. that oh that was one of the other mods that I did as well so uh, you are very limited battery size wise in the back end there so I had to I wound up just chopping all of that extra space out um, which means you can't close it anymore and I had to melt a um, piece of metal into there and give it a hole to close into so it can still close but now we can fit actual turnages in there close yourself fool forgetting I think it's time to put it back together I definitely need a normal screwdriver for this one and some tweezers yeah I remember this being one of the most annoying parts about doing the ACR I'm demonstrating here. Oh, easy peasy. Don't even know what you guys are complaining about. Easy as. Definitely need a battery. I also um, recommend not testing these um, without the top of your shell on. You get a nylon gearbox. Which flexes. So you kind of want something around the top of it. Excuse me. I'm an idiot. Is that gonna... 
Going to use correct spot. All right. I think that is ready to test. Put a battery in ya. Get a battery in ya. Be funny if it just exploded when I first shoot it. Okay, we got a working safety. Oh, she's back. So that is what a decent nylon or plastic build should sound like if it's shimmed and meshed properly. Oh, I'm so happy. I got my baby back. I got my spare back. I always, so if you see me on field, um, I always have this thing in my bag just as a um, lend out or if one of my dumb guns explodes and shit flies everywhere. Always got this thing on me, so if you want to have a play with it, just um, come annoy me on field. All right, so that is a full tear down reassembly. I've got a metal trigger now, so I'm not going to snap that. I'm very, very surprised that. So th that's been in that. This has been built as is since they came out. As long as you take your time, you don't skip steps, you do everything properly. You can have a device that actually lasts you well well worth the actual value of the product. Um, I definitely don't offer these as customer builds sort of thing. Um, but for yourself at home, for something to learn on, if you can build to this standard in a nylon gearbox, you can build a retro arms to the, to the same standard I can. Um, easy peasy. <coughs> it's an awesome learning platform. And if you totally fuck that gearbox, they're $50 on eBay. Grab three of them. Fuck around with all of them. Try different setups in all of them till you find something that you're happy with. Uh, you've seen what I'm happy with. That is basically... Um, so if I recall correctly, uh, it was doing 370, 380-ish. Um, but that is, this is the absolute max I would push a nylon system. This is sort of that limit that I found that they're happy with and they will last a year or so before you've got to, uh, f f whatever parts I put in that, the nozzle as well, you're looking at under $100. You're looking at a $50 gearbox and a couple of extra bits for something that you can happily take to games for six to 12 months before it's going to fuck out compared to my super duper high end shit, which yes, you are going to get, you know, uh, five plus years out of those sorts of high end parts. Um, but they're also a lot more expensive. This is an awesome platform to learn on, um, and fuck around with fuck around and find out. All right. Peace guys. Show me what you got, what you bring, how you fight in the ring, how you take a fucking swing. Do you got heart? Are you mean? Got some scars, got some needs. Are you willing to go bleed? I swear to God, they all let me down. I always fought just to wear the crown. I'm pissed off at these fucking clowns. Who were all taught they deserve an ounce. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now. I won't stop till I wear the crown. 